here, so. Okay, well, sorry, the audio is clear. Okay, well, I'll start talking and hopefully my face will pop up. Um, so I'm Jen Smart. I, should, I wish I had a picture or something. I should have put it on here. I'm Jen Smart. So I'm the director of Healthy Hearing. Um, some of you I've met in person, hopefully most of you. I see lots of familiar names and I can see your faces. Um, and I'm here with my um, amazing colleague, really. She's been working on Special Olympics as a graduate assistant with me. So we're going to talk to you today about audiology, which is the fancy word for hearing stuff and what audiologists do, and we're gonna to talk to you about um, how to protect your ears and answer some questions. Maddie, do you wanna say hey to everyone? There we go, can you guys hear me now? Hi, can you all hear me? We can hear I you. Can. Awesome, thank you. So my name's Maddie, <clears throat> excuse me. My name's Maddie. Um, it's so nice to be with all of you tonight and thank you for coming. I just got really excited, Willie could see me. Okay, we're ready for the next slide. <clears throat> Alrighty, so this is the agenda for tonight. So these are the topics that we'll be discussing. So we'll start off talking about what is audiology and what is an audiologist. And then we'll go into why audiology is an important part of personal health. Then we'll do a fun activity called How Loud is Too Loud. Then we'll continue on to hearing protection and hearing over protection. And then lastly, we'll answer any questions that you all have. All right, so let's get started. So I mentioned this in the beginning. We're going to talk to you about what audiology is. So it's the study of ears, hearing, and disorders related to the ears. So if you ever had something called swimmer's ear, maybe when you were in the pool a lot in the summer, um, we might see you if your ears are hurting or you can't hear well during that. Um, we also deal with balance disorders. So if you've ever felt dizzy, you might have seen an audiologist too. So it's not just hearing that we work with. So what is an audiologist? So an audiologist is a professional with graduate level education in hearing and disorders of the ear. So the graduate level of level education means that we go to school for an undergraduate degree, which is four years, and then we continue on to graduate school for another four years. And as Dr. Smart was saying, we also deal with disorders of balance and hearing. So we cover both those and help individuals with those disorders. All right, so why don't you type in the text box if you've seen an audiologist? You can just type yes. Maybe you've seen me at summer games, or maybe you've seen your audiologist at home. So I don't see anything popping up, so maybe it's completely new to you. So I'm gonna go over. When you see an audiologist, they're looking at all the parts of your ears. So David's seen one. Oh, summer games, good. I see them popping up. So when you see an audiologist, we're looking at more than just your hearing. So we're looking at your ear. We're looking at how your eardrum um, functions. I bet you did see me, Melissa, because I haven't missed one in, I think, 12 years. Um, so that outer ear, right? So the thing you can see, and then the eardrum, and we're looking at how the little tiny bones in the middle ear function. We're also looking at um, the little, so there's something in your ear that has sensory cells. We're going to talk about that. So your audiologist probably did a bunch of different tests. If you haven't seen an audiologist, we're going to make sure that you know how to get in touch with one to have your hearing tested. So you could have also seen them at school, if you're still in school, or at your doctor's office. My kids have seen them at the doctor's office, yeah. Um, and so they do a range of different tests. And there's a bunch of different ways to look at these things. Um, if you come and had them done at the summer games, we do all the things that I just described to you. And then we give you a little note at the end and we say everything looks good, or hey, follow up with your audiologist or an ear, nose, and throat doctor. So we're gonna talk more about that right now. 
So what do audiologists do? So what we do is we evaluate patients and we do different tests um, related to hearing loss or to balance um, and other stuff like that. And we test patients of all ages. So we can see patients at newborns and we can see patients all the way up until they're hundreds. So it doesn't matter what age, we see all people. And uh, we provide treatment for their hearing loss or balance issues, whatever disorder they have. And the treatment that we provide, it looks different for each patient, but commonly you'll see um, hearing aids for people with hearing loss or other devices that will amplify signals for those individuals. And also it's helpful to explain to patients how they can better situate themselves in some environments or how they can communicate better with others so that way they can hear others communicate efficiently. Also, if patients are in need of sign language services or anything like that, we can refer them to places that will help them with that. And then also we educate people similar to this on how they can prevent hearing loss caused by noise and we'll get into that in a little bit. Thanks, Maddie. So we talked about a range of different things that an audiologist does. So I mentioned this earlier. So healthy hearing, the big event happens at the summer games and we're hoping to have more of those. Oh, see now my picture shows up and I think I have a leaf in the background, which is funny, everyone. Um, there are schools. So if you're, there are requirements by the state of Maryland that schools have to see you. There's also doctor's offices. So my kids get seen at the pediatrician, um, but at the regular doctor, they might recommend that too. So if you're past the pediatrician age, your regular physician may say, you know what, you should see an audiologist. Hospitals often have audiology practices. GBMC has one, I know, in Towson area, but most of the hospitals do. And then um, audiologists can own their own practices. So I know that some of the Special Olympics athletes see audiologists in the practices that they actually um, own themselves. So you would only see an audiologist in those places. So here are some facts related to audiology. So the first fact is that 360 million people in the world have hearing loss. That's a lot of people, right? Um, and then also in 48 million people in America have hearing loss. So just to put that into perspective, um, the population just in general of Maryland is about 6 million people. So even if every single person in Maryland had hearing loss, we wouldn't be anywhere near the total amount in America that have hearing loss. So that's a lot of patients that audiologists can see. Um, also approximately 40 to 50 million Americans have ringing in their ears, which is what we call tinnitus. And then 10 million people um, in America have hearing loss caused by noise. So as you can see, there's a lot of people that need to be seen by audiologists and treated. So one of the important messages, there's a lot of people seeing audiologists that Maddie was talking about. And so if you have, if you feel like, oh, maybe I'm not hearing too well, or um, if you're having trouble with your hearing, just know that you're not the only one and we're here to help. So I'm gonna to talk to you about why audiology is important um, as a part of like personal health. So hearing loss and balance issues affect a lot of people as Maddie just covered. But if hearing loss isn't treated, it can cause difficulties hearing and communicating with others. And you like to talk to your friends and you like to communicate with them. You have fun at all the um, athletic games, talking to people, hearing the coaches. And so if you have a hearing loss, it makes those things hard. If you are still in school or if you're working, you know that hearing can be challenging there too. And so one of the things that audiologists do is we wanna make those situations easier. So we may recommend hearing aids or um, for people with hearing loss, it's really, really, um, really, really poor. We may recommend a cochlear implant, but we wanna do things that will help you in the environment that you're having trouble with. Um, we also talked about balance issues and those can be really challenging for sports, for day-to-day -day activities. And so if you have dizziness or occasional dizziness, that's something that you would tell your doctor about and they may recommend that you come and see us and we try to figure out where the balance problem is because the ear actually holds that balance system. Okay, so now it's time for our activity. So the activity is called, How Loud is Too Loud? And what we'll do is we'll put a picture up of a sound on the slide um, and you guys can tell us in the chat box if you think that this sound is dangerously loud and you should wear hearing protection around it or if you think that it's okay and you don't need to wear hearing protection. All right, am I the first one, Maddie? Yep. Okay. 
is rainfall loud enough that you would need to wear hearing protection? So put your answer in the chat box because we're not going to change the slide until we've seen some people answer. So do you think that rainfall is loud enough that you'd need to wear hearing protection? Wait, I saw a response from David. Oh, saw a response from Ben. Faith, there you go. Melissa. All right, thanks everyone. Okay, so here's the answer, you ready? No, you don't need to wear hearing protection when it's raining. I saw some of your comments that said maybe or sometimes. Now, if rain were falling on a tin roof and you were under that tin roof, it might be really loud. But in general, rain is safe. Maddie's got another one for you. So the next one is a lawnmower. So do you guys think that a lawnmower will be loud enough that you would need to wear hearing protection? Thank you, Melissa, for your answer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome, thank you guys for answering. So if we go to the next slide, we'll see the answer. And the answer is yes, you should wear hearing protection. So lawnmowers can be very loud. Um, so you should be wearing hearing protection while you're mowing the lawn. Awesome, thank you. You guys are so smart. We haven't been able to stump you. Okay, the next one is, is a whisper loud enough that you would need to wear hearing protection? Depends who's whispering, right? Yeah, but in general. <laughs> Thanks, Faith. Thanks, Melissa. Let's see who else. There's Willie Donna. That one was really easy. Let's see the answer. Nope. Whispering is safe. You don't have to wear hearing protection. Thanks, David. All right, let's see if Maddie has one that'll stump you. Okay, so this one is a concert loud enough that you would need to wear hearing protection. What do you guys think? Thanks, Melissa, for your answer. Thank you, Willie. Mm -hmm. Can be a little loud. Thanks, Amanda. Depends on the concert. Awesome, thank you, everyone. All right, so the next slide shows the answer. So concerts usually are very loud, um, especially when you're close to those speakers up at the front or different events that have those speakers, they're very loud. So you should be wearing hearing protection at most concerts, yes. You guys are smarties. That was so fun. Um, so let's talk about how loud is too loud because that's really the question. Loudness is measured in decibels or you may see it as dB. According to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, so that's the acronym is actually NIOSH, it's safe to listen to noises with a loudness of 85 dB or less for eight hours. So we use eight hours as our marker because it's a work day. Sounds that are louder than 85 dB can hurt our ears permanently. So I want you to think about this. A busy street corner is about 85 dB, which is loud, and you wouldn't be on a street corner for eight hours, so that one's okay. A lawnmower is at 91 dB, so you can't listen to that one for as long. So that one's dangerous, so you need to wear hearing protection. An electric saw is about 98 dB, which is a really loud, so you need to wear hearing protection for that one too. Okay, so here's a nice picture to kind of explain what Dr. Smart was saying. So this is thermometer, but instead of showing degrees, it's showing decibels. So as you can see, there's a green area and there's a red area. So in that green area, that means that the sound is okay and you don't have to wear hearing protection. But once that decibel increases all the way to the red area, you would wanna he wear hearing protection because it's getting pretty loud. And then you'll see that 85 decibels highlighted right there as kind of the point where it gets louder to wear hearing protection. 
So in the green area, we see rainfall and whisper, and from our activity, we learn that we don't have to wear hearing protection with that. Also, typical speech is in the green area. Um, and then once we start to get to the red area, you'll see the leaf blower, the um, lawn mower, and you'll also see um, jet planes listed. And you'll notice that when we ride planes, we don't wear hearing protection. And the reasoning is when we're sitting inside the plane, it's not that loud. But if you ever look out a plane window and you see um, the people standing on the ground directing the planes, they'll be wearing hearing protection because it's really loud outside the plane. Also similar situation is fireworks. So normally we don't wear hearing protection while we're listening to fireworks or watching fireworks because we usually watch them maybe from our balconies or from our yards and we're not very close to the fireworks because sometimes they're dangerous to be around. Um, so we don't have to wear hearing protection if we're sitting at our homes watching them in the distance. All right, so what can we do in noisy situations? And someone already earlier today, so why don't you put, yep, back here. So in the chat box, why don't you write some things that you do to protect? So if you're in a noisy situation, what are some things you can do to protect your hearing? or to reduce the noise around you. Headphones, yeah, so you can wear headphones that protect your hearing. Melissa just said that, thanks. Do you have other ideas? Cover your ears with your hands. Yep, that's a good one. You can go to the back of the room. Nice one, Amanda. Any other idea of what you can do in noisy situations? I'm going to tell you a couple ideas that we have. So one is there's an entire campaign. It's called Turn It to the Left. And it's, so if the music seems too loud, we say turn it to the left because that will make it quieter. So every device is different. Yeah, David, great, walk away from the noise. So that's the same thing. Move away from the loud noise. Yep, move away from the speaker, that's a good one. So moving away from the speaker, moving away from the noise, turning it down. If you think it's too loud, it probably is too loud. Um, hearing protection, so someone mentioned headphones. That's what my husband wears um, when he mows the lawn. And then um, there's ones that you can roll down. They're little tiny like foam ones that you put in your ears. Those you can use safely. Those will protect your ears. Is that all of them, Maddie? Did I miss anything? Nope, you covered all of them. So those were the three big ones. Um, so sometimes it, is it covers, we sit really far away, like in the very last row, which isn't the best seat, but it's definitely the quietest seat. Okay, let's see the next one. So let's talk about hearing overprotection. So we want to protect our ears, but there actually is such thing as overprotecting them. And that just means that we don't want to block out all the sounds because some sounds are very important to us because they keep us safe. So an example of this would be a safety alarm. So a fire alarm tells us that we need to evacuate the building and that's something that we want to hear because it keeps us safe. Um, also people talking, they could be saying something important to us relating to our safety. And then another example are sounds in our environment. So one could be a car beeping at us, telling us not to cross the road. So in those situations, we wouldn't want to be wearing hearing protection because those sounds are very important to us. Um, and then it's important to wear hearing protection only when we're around those loud noises, such as the ones we've been discussing throughout this talk, and especially the ones in that red section on the thermometer. That's great, Maddie. So Maddie covered a lot of the things when we don't wear hearing protection, because that's, that's hard, right, to know what's dangerously loud. Um, so we gave you a couple of ideas. Now we have time for questions. So you may have a question about what I do or what Maddie does or about your ears, um, and you can type those questions in the chat box.
All right, so the first question is, what might be some warning signs that you should go see an audiologist to get your ears checked? Um, so you should really, if you're young, you should have your hearing checked every couple of years. But if you're older, you should go every single year. Um, some of the things, if you're having trouble hearing what people are saying or understanding, maybe you're in a conversation or at the dinner table and you're missing things, that's a good time to go and have your ears checked. If your ears feel different, so if one ear is better than the other ear, um, you should definitely go and have your hearing tested. So maybe you hear better out of your right ear than your left, you should definitely see an audiologist. Um, if you start hearing ringing in your ears, like bells or whistling, it's called tinnitus, you should definitely go and see an audiologist. Um, those are the big ones. The next one is, some people use earbuds and some people use headphones. Is one safer than the other? So when it comes to listening to your music on um, like a personal device or an iPad whenever you're watching TV, it doesn't matter which one, but if you need to block out the noise around you, you probably want to wear the ones that cover your ears so you don't have to turn it up very loud. Um, the ones that don't cover your whole ears, like um, the ones that come with iPhones, if those don't cover your whole ears, they let in more not noise in your environment, and that means you have to turn up the volume louder. Cool, thanks. And I saw David Godoy actually raise his hand. So David, I'm going to unmute you, and you can ask your question, okay? All right, let me find you, David. So for people who have um, grandparents who live in, in South America, um, do, do you have people to refer uh, ad ideologies in South America so my grandfather can go to that doctor in South America? He, li he lives where I was from in Ecuador. In Ecuador, you know what? I don't have a name off the top of my head, but... Um, I will take note of Ecuador. If you can maybe get the, the city, if you, if you know what city they live in, I can see if I have... That he lives in the capital, Quito. Okay, the capital of Ecuador? Yes. Okay, so Maddie, and I, perhaps, Maddie and I are going to work on that. Perhaps you have some suggestions and, and then either uh, Ben or, or Jeff can get back to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's we put will. Ben and Jeff to work, actually. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Maddie and I will find that. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see if we can look up audiologists in Ecuador for you. Yep. Yep. All right. And I see Joe's hand, actual hand up. So, Joe, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask your question. Okay, go hey. ahead. Hello. Joe. Hi. What's up? Oh, because I have a question to ask you. Okay. Um, because um, sometimes my ear can have an ear drawn a little bit. What's across to my ear drum? You're, you said, tell me again what's wrong with your ear drum. Tell me what happens. Like a funny noise, like a bee. Like yeah, a I know. Ears. That's tinnitus, Joe. Is it just one ear or both ears? One ear, this ear. Like my... Yep, so you need to have your hearing tested by an audiologist. Okay. Where do you where do you live in Maryland? Do you live in Baltimore County? No, I live uh, Montgomery County. Montgomery County. I have some great people in Montgomery County. Yeah, so Maddie and I are gonna make sure we send. We'll send you some audiologists. Okay, good. In Montgomery County. He knew my address. <laughs> I suggest I need, to have. I have what my town? Ages. You can tell me what town you live in in Montgomery County, and I will find Deerwood. someone. Deerwood. Deerwood. Okay. All right, I'm gonna look them up. I'm gonna send you a couple options. Okay. Cool, thanks, Joe. Thanks, no problem. Does anybody else have questions? I have a question. I have a question. Um, so, oh, actually I see Melissa's hand up. So before I do my question, Melissa, let's unmute your line. There you go, Melissa, you can ask your question. Hi, Jen, this is question for me. For you, if like if you like um have like water in your ears when you get out of the shower thing, and you try to get the water out, how do you get it out? 
That is a great question. So you know what, Melissa? I have really curvy ear canals. So I used to always get water stuck in my ears. So if you can feel it in your ears, if you just put your ear down on a pillow, so just lay down for just a minute or two, the water will naturally come out of your ears, but you shouldn't put something in because that can make it worse. So I would just lay your head down on a pillow for a minute and then on the other side for a minute. I do that after the pool because my ears are so curvy. I got swimmer ears, swimmer's ear a lot when I was little. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, that was great. Melissa <laughs> sent me a review in the chat. Melissa, do you want to tell Dr. Smart and Maddie what you thought about this presentation or do you want me to read it? Oh. <laughs> well, she said me, she said, this is amazing. So yeah, this was amazing that I met when I'm, I met her when we were doing summer's game. Oh, you remember from summer games. Good one. Melissa, yeah. I'm so sad that there were no summer games this year because there is one I know. thing I love. I know. I hope Listen. they do it next year, 2021. We're going to figure this pandemic out. We're going to be back <laughs> next yes. year. Yes. I went I to the doctors and they put like those little, like those, those um things you like to put your, like if you have something in your ears, they use one of those like peroxide or something. Yep. And then... And then she was like, and they cleaned it all up. And then I was like, getting a little dizzy. Because they said, you'll get a little dizzy. I was like, okay. Did you get, did you get dizzy or did you feel okay? You yeah, did? I was a little dizzy. Huh. Well, now are you still dizzy or are you better? No. No. Okay, good. I'm good. No. <laughs> okay, good. There we go. All right. And I thought I saw Donna's hand up. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so Donna, I'm going to unmute your line if you want to ask your question. Oh, there we go. Almost. Let me try again. No, nope, still muted. <laughs> kind of from here. Is oh, it unmuted? Th nope, now you're good. Hey, okay. Donna. Hi, my daughter Jennifer is here with us. Um, Jennifer has Down syndrome, and I've won wanting to know if you have any information that talks about um, ears. the inner ear of a person with Down syndrome. Jennifer wears hearing aids. Oh, okay. Has, but she has lots of problems with fluid getting behind the eardrum. And we have oh. gone through tubes in the ears within the uh -huh. last year and a half, four times. Oh, yep. Um, I do. I can send you some information. So you get ear infections a lot in your middle ear. Is that right, Jennifer? In my, my left ear. In your in left, left ear? Yeah. That's a tricky one. So I bet you see your ear, nose, and throat doctor a lot, right? Regularly. Regularly. So I'll send you some information, but one of the things that happens that causes that fluid to get in that middle ear area is you have, I'm sure your doctor told you about this, but I'm gonna tell you about it again. You have a little tube called the eustachian tube and it needs to open and close. And so if it gets, if it gets closed or if you get a cold or um, anything like that, it doesn't let mm -hmm. the no That's okay. So sometimes when you have Down syndrome, that your ears actually do, they're smaller and it's a little bit harder to keep them open and then you can get ear infections a lot. Um, so that's definitely, definitely something that's challenging and I bet frustrating. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank were you. you. Gonna say, were you going to say something else, Jennifer? I'll make a yeah, note. My, Ma my, Maddie will make a note. My kid, I'm okay, I'm okay now. You're okay now? Good. So some are, my I bet. tubes in my ear. You have my one tube? Uh -huh. One tube, one's out. So you had two tubes, but you still have one in your left ear? Yes, yeah, I'm um, okay now. Okay, good. Yep, tubes are really helpful, but it's really frustrating when you get that fluid because it either hurts or it makes it so you can't hear, right? Right. Yeah, that's frustrating. I'm going to find some information for you. Thanks. Can you say something? Thanks. You can mute us. Okay. <laughs> I think... Hey, Jeff, I think Amanda had a question next. 
Amanda, did you Amanda have a question? Amanda Moore. Jeff, okay. Uh, Amanda, I'm going to unmute your line, okay? There we go, Amanda. Do you want to ask your question? Maybe? Oh, no, back on mute. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, Amanda, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hi anyway, and if you have a question, you can ask it later because I'm here. Cool. All right. So I have a question for Maddie. Maddie, what made you want to become an audiologist? Awesome question. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so I actually wanted to become an audiologist because when I was in high school, I volunteered with the deaf community and I took sign language, and I was really interested in it, and I thought how I could help people who had hearing loss. So I started shadowing audiologists and that's how I picked my career path. That's awesome. And so what, um, like for someone who might wanna become an audiologist, what kind of classes do you take when you're in college? And then how do you get ready to go to audiology school to become a doctor? Yeah, so when I did my undergraduate degree, I did it in communication sciences and disorders. So some schools call that speech and hearing. So we take speech classes and we, te uh, we take hearing classes because they're very um, correlated. And I took a lot of sign language classes just because that was of interest to me, but that's not a requirement. Um, but so we took speech and hearing classes. And then in grad school, we continued to take hearing aids classes, anatomy classes, and all types of classes. So that way we can learn about the body and different patients and different disorders. So that way we can treat them effectively. Awesome, thanks, Maddie. Um, so Maddie, I think you, you may have volunteered at Healthy Athletes in the past and Dr. Smart. I know you've run Healthy Athletes <laughs> for many years. I love it. <laughs> so what are, what are some of, when athletes come into Healthy Athletes, what are some of the common issues that you see um, that maybe our athletes should be looking out for or some of the common questions uh, that you typically get to answer that day? One common um, thing that we see is, um, so Jennifer brought up one, is fluid in the ear. So they might have, sometimes the fluid in your ear isn't an infection, it's just fluid, but it's still a problem. So you may not feel any pain, but you may not be able to hear well. We find that sometimes um, a lot of, we call it cerumen, but it's earwax. A lot of earwax in the ears. Um, so we, you need to have that cleaned out. So you shouldn't use a Q-tip. You should go and see your audiologist and they'll remove it safely. Um, sometimes people have had trouble hearing, but they didn't know who to go and see. And they come to healthy athletes because it's fun and we find a hearing loss. And so then we refer you to an audiologist to do a more in-depth test. We don't necessarily get balance issues. Those are caught a little bit earlier, but those are the three main ones that we see. Cool, thanks. Um, does anybody else have a question or am I just gonna keep interviewing people? <laughs> anybody else? Because I have some more. So Dr. Smart, what has been your favorite part about healthy athletes or being involved in healthy athletes? Uh, two things. One thing is providing all of the um, like audiology information and information about hearing to all the athletes. It's truly one of my favorite days out of the entire year. Um, but the other is actually seeing my students and audiologists in the community also really love the event and get to um, interact with a range of different people and to talk to all the athletes about their awards and their sports. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite year days. Um, the whole event actually is one of my favorites, so. Cool, thanks. And Maddie, have you volunteered at Healthy Athletes before? No, I haven't gotten the opportunity just oh yet. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, <laughs> I know, I'm that sad. Means we, that means we have to have summer games in uh, 2021 so that you can yeah. do Healthy Athletes. Or we'll just do Healthy Athletes before summer games. That's the other, that would be the other option. Yeah. Um, so I know that David is a swimmer and I think Melissa is a swimmer, right? And I think Amanda does track, but Joe does track. I'm trying to think of other athletes who are on. I'm not sure what sports Kelly does. But are there certain things that athletes, especially athletes who swim, should do to 
protect their ears to take care of their ears? Is there anything um, specific that they can be doing? So if you're a swimmer and you have tubes in your ears, you have to have, um, you have to have earplugs because you can't let the pool water or the ocean water or the lake water get into your ears. So um, you would want to wear earplugs. If you, um, if you don't have tubes and you're just swimming all the time, that's great. And you don't have to do anything special. Um, unless you get outer ear infections or swimmers ears, then you want to wear earplugs too, because that would keep the water out of your ear. Um, the other sports related to sweat and things, you just want to make sure like you would with anything that you take a shower afterwards, because you're going to be sweating a lot and that could get into your ear, but you don't need to clean out your ear specifically. And remember, you should not use Q-tips. Got it. All right. Um, do we have any more questions in the chat? Willie has a question. Oh, Willie has a question. Willie, do you want to type it or do you want to? Well, let's unmute you, Willie. We'll unmute you. I want to ask, um, hold on. Dr. Swan, what is her favorite sport? <gasps> oh. Willie. Willie, that's a great question. That's a great question. Well, listen, I love to watch football. I always have. I love to watch football, but I love to play soccer. You like soccer? I do. I love to play soccer. You played soccer since you were a kid? I did. I played since I was little, maybe four or five. Yeah. Do you do juggling? I'm not good at juggling so much, but I'm getting better because I have an eight-year-old who likes to play soccer too, so I have to show him some of my tricks. You did soccer tricks before? I do soccer tricks. I'm really good at heading the ball. Like this? Yep. Uh-huh. I am really good at that. And how many soccer balls do you have, Jen? I have two. I have a special one because my husband works for Coca-Cola, so I have a really cool one. I wish I had it with me. Um, I have a special one, and then I have a little – oh, actually, probably have three. And I have a little one because some of my kids are younger than eight, and then I have a regular one. That's boring. Do you have a Wilson one? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know what – I don't know which kind it is. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Do you like soccer too? What's your favorite sport? I like um, bocce, basketball, and softball. Oh, basketball. My son loves basketball too. That's a good oh. one too. I got to figure out bocce. I'm going to, I'm going to work on that, Willie. But you like soccer the most, huh? I do like, I like to play soccer the most, but I do like to watch football. Yeah. Cause football is one of my favorite because I was telling my co-worker that he likes cowboy, but then he don't. He won't warn me about, don't say about cowboys. Uh-huh. That's what you were telling me about that. What's your favorite team, though? Is it, what's your favorite team? Is it the Ravens? Redskins. <gasps> oh, where, where are you in, are you in Redskins town, though? You probably don't live in Baltimore. What's that? Where, which, which county do you live in? P PG County. Oh, you are a Redskins fan. Yeah, PG County, yeah. See, in Baltimore, you have to be a Ravens fan. It's like a rule. You can't live there yeah. without it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Willie. And, I, and Amanda typed in that she had a question. So we are going to try one more time with Amanda. Amanda, I'm going to unmute you. And we'll hope for the best this time. There you go, Amanda. Do you want to ask your question? Yes. How about my work at local grocery store? of my co-worker Max Bugs also to my ear and is bothering me and he talks loud like near to me and I saw this person can you talk quietly can you talk quiet well as noise yeah always we have stuff I heard you. Yep. I saw you say that, Amanda. So you work and they are talking too loudly. Is that what you're telling me? Yep. Yep. I think you're doing everything right. I think that you do need to tell them to speak quieter, that you don't need them to talk so loud. 
Why? Because that would, that would hurt my ears, too. I don't like it when people talk loudly. Yeah. A box? Yes. Sometimes in healthy athletes, I get so excited that Dr. Smart has to tell me to not talk so loud. But it's just because I'm so excited Which, for the day. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah. that's really needs to. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amanda, I think you're doing the right thing. You're using your voice, so good job. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Dr. Smart. All right. Any last call for questions? Healthy hearing questions. All right. Well, seeing none, but also knowing that Dr. Smart has, has been and will continue to be a great resource for Special Olympics Maryland um, and all of your questions. If you do, if you do uh, hang up tonight and think of some things that you're not sure of, you're, you wish you would have asked, Email them to me or email them to Ben, uh, who's also Jeff Abel tonight. Um, <laughs> we'll make sure that we pass them on uh, to both, both Maddie and Dr. Smart uh, so they can answer all of, all of your questions. But um, I want to thank Maddie and Dr. Smart for putting this together and being such great um, advocates for Special Olympics Maryland. Um, I think all of our athletes should know we, Dr. Smart is probably the best cheerleader for Special Olympics Maryland we've ever had and we will ever have. And Joe's giving you, oh man, Joe's giving you a round of applause into the camera. So that's pretty cool. Um, but whenever we need Dr. Smart to do something or we have a question, we always know that she's going to say yes. <laughs> so it's been pretty, been pretty good. Oh, David, I see your hand up. Do you want to ask another question before we sign off? We appreciate the time for, for speaking with us today, uh, we, we learned a lot of information about our, about our ears. You are so sweet. You are very welcome, David. Well, that's, yeah. I, I can't think of a better way to end it than the words of David Godoy. Um, so thanks everybody for joining. Um, let's unmute everybody really fast so we can all thank you for smart. Wow, and well, Monique, it sounds like you've made a really positive, like a pivot uh, here. And All right. So thank you so much, everybody. And thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, thanks for being thank, you. Bye. thank you. Thank you. It was great to see you. Bye, Jen. Great to see you, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.